potato is one of those recipes that people struggle with. The mash either comes out far too sloppy or too dry. Sit back and watch this video and you'll learn a few tricks of the trade to produce the perfect creamy mashed potato that family and friends will absolutely love. It's a guaranteed winner. Now don't worry about writing down the ingredients and quantities, it's a list in the comment section. And ask your family and friends to watch this one and support me by hitting the thumbs up and subscribe buttons below. Now I'm using about a kilo of potatoes today. Now what we need to do is first a saucepan with cold water in it and just want to dice your spuds up. Now with your potatoes, I'm actually using rust potatoes today so I find they're very good for mashing and they, they don't make a bad roasting potato either. Now if you find spuds, spuds ain't spuds when it comes to how you cook them. But rust potatoes gives you that good all round flavour and consistency. Now with the spuds you want to dice them up to around about 20 mil squares or thereabouts because if you have large and small ones, they won't cook evenly. And the last thing we want is potato that is mushy when we start uh, mashing it. So we will keep it all nice and consistent. So once you finish dicing, cold water, to about 20 mil above the size, above the height of the potato. And on the stove, maximum heat until it comes to boil. Then we reduce the heat down to about a simmer and we cook for about 15 minutes. Now in a preheated pan, we add about a tablespoon of oil. Now I'm using olive oil because I like the flavour from olives. And you're going to add the garlic and ginger. And just fry it up until it turns that nice golden colour. Or you can smell the garlic and onion flavour. If you can smell it, fantastic. I only take about two to three minutes maximum. And while we're, that's cooking, we want to test the potato to make sure that's nice and soft. Now test potato, it's really easy. Use a knife and just poke one, one of the sections. If it goes through nice and easy without much resistance, you know it's ready. And these are perfect. So we need to drain the water off the potato, then put it straight back on the stove. Now this is where my recipe changes compared to a lot of what you see out there. After I've drained the water off, I like to put it back on the stove and actually evaporate the steam, or the rest of that water, or the steam away. So that way when I add the milk and butter, it doesn't go sloppy, I get that really nice texture. If the potatoes break up at this stage, it really doesn't matter. It's just going to help us when we go to mash. Now you don't want to brown them. It's just toss them around until a lot of that steam evaporates. Now we're pretty close to where we need to be with that. I'm quite happy with that. There's nothing, no water, no moisture in the bottom. That's okay. So we add two tablespoons of butter and the nice browned garlic and ginger. We add that in there and the milk. And now we start mashing. So the, keep your heat down low. Now this really comes down to how fine you want it. Now depending on what I'm cooking, if I'm doing like lamb shanks, I won't take all the lumps out of the potato. I like to have a little bit lumpy. But today I'm going to go for this real silky smooth mash. It's going to look absolutely incredible. So take all the lumps out and just give it one last stir. Make sure we mix in all that garlic and ginger. We don't want clumping together. And look at that. So silky, so smooth. Absolutely perfect. Well, have a look at that. Don't you think that's the smoothest, creamiest mashed potato you've ever seen? Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Can't wait to taste this with my dinner. Oh, look at that. 
smooth, creamy and glossy. What more can you ask for in a perfect mashed potato? Now a few of my seasonings I like to use on my mash include cheese, bits of bacon, parsley, Cajun or Italian seasonings. It really comes down to what I'm going to be serving it with. How about adding your favourite seasonings in the comments section so we can share it with other people who enjoy home cooking. And thanks for watching and for those people who subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate your continued support. And remember, keep it simple. See you next time. Bye for now.